What's up, guys? Hello, natural light. We meet again. I don't know. I don't like doing comedy at natural light. It's very unnerving. You gotta, you gotta go to the curtain for the five window. It's scary, man. What's up, guys? I was gonna lead off with all my, my drug ad jokes, but Brad pretty much covered that. So I ran into something else. Um, oh, I'm nervous because uh, tomorrow I'm going to get my hair cut. As you can see, it's getting pretty out of control up here. Got, gotta get a high and tight for the summer. But uh, I'm always kind of nervous because I've been to this place three times. It's Floyd's on Melrose. And the first two times I went there, I got a gay guy, and I got a pretty good haircut. And the last time I went, I got a straight guy, and I got like the worst fucking haircut ever. So I don't, I don't want to sound like a sexual orientationalist. <laughs> But they're still speaking for themselves. And, and the last time I went, like in the middle of the haircut, like I realized it, I was like, oh my god, I think this guy might be straight. <laughs> I was like, looking how bad it was. So I tried to like feel him out. I was like, so, uh, baseball. <laughs> but I like, didn't know anything about baseball. I was like, I didn't know what to say. And he was like, yeah, I don't really like baseball. I was like, okay, okay, you win this round, hairdresser. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's go deeper. Uh, so I just saw Iron Man. That movie kicks ass, right? And he was like, no, nah, I don't really, I don't really like that kind of movie. So I was like, doesn't like sports, doesn't like action movies. Looking good, looking good. This guy's probably gay. <laughs> I sang that in my head. And then I was like, all right, let's close the deal. Let's get some definitive thing. So I was like, uh, so yeah, like all the guys that work there are all like spiky haired and pierced and tattoos because they're like cool. So I was like, I was like, oh, nice tattoos. I bet the ladies like that. And he was like, yeah, I guess. My girlfriend likes it. And I was like, oh. In my head, I was like, damn it. And then he just gave me a terrible haircut. <laughs> maybe because he was straight, or maybe because he was like, why is this guy trying to figure out if I'm gay the whole time? This guy's a dick. I'm giving this fucker the worst haircut ever. So I don't know. It was one of the two. I'm, I'm nervous, so. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but something cool did happen. Last weekend, uh, someone recognized me on the street from doing stand-up. It was like the first time it's ever happened to me. It was pretty fun cool. Uh, what happened was, I worked out at this bar in Venice on weekends to, you know, augment my sizable comedian salary. <laughs> when I say sizable comedian salary, I of course mean occasional free beers. And when I say occasional, I of course mean infrequent. Uh, <laughs> No, but so I was working out in the bar, and this guy comes up to the bar, and he's like, Hey, Top Gun. It's really gay, right? I was, like, I was like, what? And I didn't realize, he was talking about this joke I used to do, like, months ago, about how, like, when you're little, you think Top Gun's, like, the coolest movie ever, and then you see it when you're 20, and you're like, this is the gayest shit of all time. But, like, I totally forgot about that, because it was, like, five months ago. So, like, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, yeah, I, I guess it is. That volleyball scene. But I, I thought he was just drunk. I was like ready to motion to the bouncer, like, take, take him out. That's take him out. This is take him, take him down. I'm the only one that uses the hand signals, but they're catching on. But then, uh, then he was like, no, I saw you do a, a set. You did a Top Gun joke. It was really funny. And I was like, oh, wow, I really appreciate that, man. Like, and then in my head, I was thinking, how did he remember that from like five months ago? Like, my only theory is that, like, my Top Gun is gay, but, like, resonated so deeply with him. Like, he had always thought that and was, like, too afraid to say something. And then he saw me. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm doing a set in Hollywood on Sunday. And then he was, like, already gone. And I was talking to no one. And then, like, two hours later, I saw him just, like, fucking hammered, like, grinding this chick up against the wall. I was like, that guy's a fan of my comedy. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming out. Like, he was just fucking hammered. We were about to judge. I get hammered all the time. Like, we've all been that hammered, you know? We wake up the next morning, and you have to, like, piece shit together like it's a mystery. You have no idea what happened to you. You're, like, calling people, taking notes, like, interviewing people. You're, like, some sort of, like, hungover 1930s private investigator. You're, like, I woke up. It was bright. Too bright. See? My hand was cut. My leg was bruised. There was a penis and swastika on the face. I didn't find out why. Who was responsible? Homosexual Nazis? I didn't know. I get to the bottom of this case, and quickly. I said, I think I'm making it sound too cool. That sounds awesome. Everyone wants to be a 1930s private investigator. He was cool 1930s slang. Like, there was one bra, she had gams for me the next week. Gams, I tell you. Gams. I wish it was like that. But no, everyone hates, like, piece of shit together. And then, like, someone tells you, like, I never did that. And, like, we have pictures. I was like, damn it. So my new strategy, I just got a new digital camera. My new strategy, I'm just going to take pictures all night long, even when I'm blackout. 
So then I can wake up and just go to the camera and have a perfect photographic record of what I did. You know, I go wake up and like, dear God, what the fuck happened to me last night? Fucking, my clothes are torn, I'm covered in blood. Just like take out the camera like, oh my God, I killed a hobo. Oh my God. No wonder I'm wearing eight jackets. This is awful. I gotta stop getting drunk and going down by the rail yard. This is, this is, this is bad. <laughs> Ah, uh, hobos. I used to fucking want to be a hobo when I was a kid. Like, it seems like a great lifestyle, you know? You're just fucking hanging out at the railroad tracks all day. Like, the top of your hat is, like, hilariously open like a tin can. Nobody cares. You just fucking cook hot dogs over, like, a flaming oil barrel. That's your life. It seems like a good time. But then I realized, like, as a son, it's like a dick move my parents become hobo. Like, they already, it's probably hard enough for them to tell like other parents, like a comedian living in LA, like to have them tell other parents I'm a hobo. Like how would you even do that? Like they're at a party talking to other parents, like, oh your son graduated from medical school. Oh, what's Carl doing? <laughs> well, last time we talked to him, he'd sew some comically mismatched patches onto his jacket. <laughs> he said he was just gonna hop a boxcar to nowhere, see where that takes him. We're really proud of that kid, he's got a good head on his shoulders. <laughs> he's going places. <laughs> <laughs> That's my backup plan. This whole comedy thing doesn't pan out. Take it to the rails. <laughs> no, because I'm not in stand-up comedy to become famous. I'm in it for the prestige. That's right. Only the other comics know what I'm talking about. Nothing says well-respected like getting up at one, watching cartoons all day, talking to yourself in the shower, and then repeating those things on stage. <laughs> I'm just in the shower like, oh my god, that's, that's hilarious. I should say that to a bunch of strangers sometimes. That could be comedy gold. Good. So it's good to have a backup plan. No, my real backup plan from when I was a kid. This is what I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to be like a vigilante, you know, like fight crime. You know, like all my childhood heroes, like Spider-Man, Batman, The Punisher, Carl Winslow from Family Matters. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't just fight her, he, he cleaned up the streets. I want to be like that guy. I know I, I know I have the right instinct. And my life didn't go that way, but I was driving on the freeway the other day, and I saw like the Amber Alert sign, you know? It was like, child abduction, black Range Rover, license plate number. And my first reaction was, this motherfucker is mine! <laughs> yeah, I got the killer instinct. That's how it should work, like, that's a better incentive to get those Amber Alert guys. You never see them, like, I don't care. If you can bring them in, that's how you'd call them up, you'd be like, I found that black Range Rover you're looking for. They'd be like, we're sending someone out right away. You'd be like, oh no, I'm bringing them in. <laughs> Who the hell? The chief of busted? What the hell's going on in here? I don't know, chief kid says he's bringing them in. Bringing them in? Who the hell is this kid? I like his style, let's see what he can do. No, chief, I know it's a long shot, but right now it's the only shot we've got. <laughs> And you know the chief would talk like that. The chief's always talk like that. And they rolled up sleeves and loosened tie, and they're always pissed off. They're always like, Hans, get the hell into my office! I told you to catch that black Range Rover, not get high and stop at Fat Burger! Hans, you're on the force! Like, I was never on the force, what are you talking about? I just saw the Amber Alert Park. God damn it, Hans, I can't stay mad at you! Yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good, that doesn't make any sense. Ah, uh, the chief. No, what I really wanted to be as a kid, like, you know, like all normal, red-blooded, non-communist children. <laughs> I wanted to be a superhero. That's pretty standard, pretty standard childhood dream. And, uh, you know, I knew I didn't have any powers, because, you know, I tested, I tested it out. But uh, I had a really good plan. This was my plan as a kid, to get superpowers. So I was just like, I'm just going to go to a place where there's a lot of radioactive shit <laughs> and just be really reckless and hope for the best. Just like, oh, what is that, crack orb, a nuclear reactor? Hope that doesn't get all over me, possibly giving me superpowers. <laughs> you have to eat some, you have to eat some, you be part of it. And then like to make sure you got cool powers, you'd like bring some like cool animals whose powers you'd wanted and be like, oh, what is that, uh, nuclear waste dump? Hope this wolf and cheetah I brought don't get into there. Radioactive, get in there, motherfucker. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'd have the, the speed of a wolf and the speed of a cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much.